Hi everybody, welcome back to Aliens and Angels. Well, this is again our weekly live Q&A community chat and I'm very pleased to bring you another interesting topic for discussion, ET and the future of humanity. Have you ever wondered why ET makes direct contact with some of us? According to my own experiences and the experiences of other ET contactees, it's because ET has an important message for humanity. In case you've not noticed, things are not going very well here on Earth, and we must make some course corrections if we're going to create the kind of world which we all desire. Join our lively discussion and become part of the conversation. Please post your questions and comments during the live chat. And you are welcome to join our Facebook group called Aliens and Angels. As usual, all of the links are featured below in the description. Check me out, subscribe to my channels, leave me a comment, like my videos, and share my content with your friends. So, um... Yeah, this is an interesting subject. So I've talked at length with other contactees and even abductees about, you know, the future of humankind and the messages that ET is trying to give us. So I'm going to uh, make my first reference to uh, my friend Preston Dennett. Now, he's written over 30 books. On, you, uh, uh, on different UFO and ET contact and contactee and abductee experiences. And he knows quite a lot about the subject. If you haven't done so already, please do check him out. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel and he has a website, Preston Dennett at Weebly, I believe, dot com. And um, check out his books. He's very knowledgeable. He's been a MUFON investigator for quite a number of years. And um, he reports on different experiences, like, for instance, the aerial school uh, appearance where an ET landed on a school ground and made contact with some of the students. And the message that ET gave them was that we need to take good care of this planet, that it's not just for our own benefit and for the benefit of the planet, but it also fits into our solar system, which forms part of a greater ecosystem. And so it's really, really important that we stop exploding nuclear bombs and we start taking really good care of the planet. Now, my friend Dolly Saffron, who's also a lifetime experiencer, um, we had her on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Preston has interviewed her at length and written a book called Symmetry, and it's all about Dolly Saffron's real-life contactee, lifetime contactee experiences. And she says much the same thing. The primary message from ET is that we need to take very good care of the planet. We need to take good care of each other. We need to rise above our petty differences, the, the, the um, ideological conceptions that we use to separate us, and um, also come together in love and in, in peacefulness. And that is what we need to do if we, if, we, if we want future generations to survive and thrive on planet Earth. Then there is also uh, another person that I've interviewed a number of times, and her name is Nancy. And um, 
I'm trying to think of Nancy's last name. Sorry, Nancy, if you're seeing this. Uh, it's Nancy Thames. So Nancy has also been given the same message from extraterrestrials that we need to care for our planet. We need to learn to care for each other. We need to remove our intergenerational dysfunction and become more peaceful, loving beings that coexist in harmony on planet Earth. And we need to do that for ourselves. And we also need to do that for the sake of our entire um, solar system and galaxy itself. So um, the message has been very clear. We've also had experiences where extraterrestrials have showed up and disabled test launches of nuclear bombs. What's interesting too is the extraterrestrial presence really kicked off when humans started experimenting with nuclear bombs. Now I'm not talking about nuclear energy, I'm talking about nuclear bombs. There's a huge, huge difference. With nuclear energy, there is no splitting of the atoms. What they're, uh, what's used is radioactive rods that produce heat and they're placed into water which cools them and the water turns to steam and it's steam that powers the electrical grid or whatever we're using the power plants for. It's quite a different matter. Um, I know it's funny to think about it. I always thought it was from splitting the atom and harnessing that great power that was released, but no, that's not true at all. We're actually living in the era of steampunk where things are being driven by steam um, energy, which is compressed steam, which then turns turbines and produces the electricity that we need. So when the bombs started going off, um, ET presence rat rat ratcheted, wrapped, whatever, really started happening. Um, hi, Don. Don and Spinja are here. Don Rogers at March 4th Productions. He says, great message. So um, everybody is welcome to um, check in tomorrow. Don Rogers and Canadian Spinja are getting married and I'm officiating the wedding. And we're going to go live at, I believe, 8.30 a.m. Mountain Time, which is 7.30 a.m. Pacific and 10.30 a.m. Um, Eastern Time. And it's all going to be covered by our good friend Robert Khalil over at Typical Skeptic Podcast. And um, he's going to be the MC, the Master of Ceremonies. So we're all really, really excited for tomorrow. So, um, but thanks for making the time to uh, come on, come on the show today, Don. Don says, I have heard a theory that ET watch us closely because nuclear and stealth tech was given to us in a trade and misused by the government. Oh, yeah, I totally, totally agree with you, Don. Now, um, for those of you on audio, I'm reading the comments out so that you can get both sides of the conversation. So, yes, there's lots of um, accounts of um, that ET has been dealing with our military and our world leaders for a number of years and that there was a bit of a trade. Some people believe that ET has screwed up the trade and other people believe humans have screwed up the trade. But we sure have seen um, the onset of fiber optics transistors, and then look at the cell phones today. Look at how the telephones have changed in the last 30 years here on Earth. And what's lagging way behind, of course, is um, safe and um, um, methods of getting energy, zero point energy. Uh, what's also lagging behind is the things that people use to do their domestics, like their washing machines, and their stoves and their refrigerators. That has not come far at all in the last hundred years as has combustion engines. So um, I, be I believe what Don says here is actually true. 
He's heard a theory that ET watch us closely because nuclear and stealth tech was given to us in a trade and misused by the government. So I'm also wondering, though, what the trade was for ET. What did they get out of it? So um, getting back to the future, I want to talk now a little bit about how a lot of things on Earth are inversions. They're inversions of what's true and healthy. And those inversions um, create situations that are unhealthy and not good for us. And so I want to talk a little bit, since we're talking about world peace and, you know, our global uh, humanity evolving to our next stage of development. And I want to contrast that to what's going on with the WEF. If you're not familiar with what's going on with the WEF, you need to do some research right away because it's going to affect every single one of us and especially our children and our grandchildren. So what they're offering planet Earth is a worldwide peace. And this also goes uh, along with the Bilderbergers and the um, um, World Health Organization, and let's just say the power, the people that have the money and the power, the bankers, the military industrial complex, um, the oligarchs, those who hold the economic power, what they're planning is what they call world peace. And the way they want to do it is by creating a surveillance, a global surveillance state where all of us are supervised and watched and we're given all kinds of restrictions, whether or not we can travel, they want to get rid of money, they want to replace it with a credit system that they can control, which means that they will be able to control what we want to spend our money, or I should say our finances, our digital currency on. These people, quite frankly, in my opinion, are insane. They are not in a position to be making choices that will affect all of humanity and in turn the entire earth. And an example of that would be um, their idea of new green technologies. So I've spoken to this before. I'm just going to say hello to Woo Riders DJ, DG. Sorry, Woo Riders. Woo Riders DG. He says, have a great day. And he offers us lots of smiles. And I just love that so much. Thanks for dropping in, Woo Riders DG. I really appreciate you. So getting back to these green technologies, they sound great until you find out the amount of pollution and problems with the creation of solar panels and wind, uh, wind turbines and that they don't last very long. They're ineffective and they can't run without uh, conventional power methods to back them up. And then how do we dispose of them? We dig big holes and we just bury them because we can't break them down. So this is not a solution, especially when we know that there's zero point energy um, available to us. There's been all kinds of inventions by um, humans here on earth where they've got um, cars and other machinery that's powered by water or powered by nothing, at least what appears to be nothing, um, what we call empty space, which isn't exactly empty. We've got all kinds of inventions, and in every single case, those inventions have been confiscated, hidden from humanity, and the people who created them mysteriously died. And so there are ways that we can create peace and harmony here on planet Earth. But what the WEF, which is the World Economic Forum, and the likes of them are planning is not what they publish on their website. Not at all. It all sounds good. We'll come together in harmony and uh, have peace and end poverty. But the way they're doing it is actually a fake way of doing these things and achieving these goals and a way to actually turn um, humanity into a slave race. And so I want to really uh, stress that I don't believe this is what ET is talking about. 
I think what ET is talking about is us coming into our personal sovereignty and us making friends with other human beings and together um, remedying our um, intergenerational dysfunction and our problems and our insanities and our delusions and becoming truly a new creation here on earth. And in doing so, we will revert back to being stewards of the planet where we'll take good care of the animals, the air supply, the water supply, and each other. And I truly believe this is what ET wants for the future of mankind. So I'm um, just wondering if anyone uh, out there has any comments they'd like to add or if they'd like to add to the conversation in any way. And otherwise, I will just keep chatting. And um, depending on um, how many comments I get will dictate how long the show is today, because I'm sure many of you have better things to do than to sit around and listen to me repeat myself. So. Um, yeah, so the thing is, is that our planet can be restored to paradise. Now, we may not all agree what paradise might look like, but we do agree that it would be peaceful, where our children will be safe, where we would be safe, free from harm, where we will not be uh, having toxic bodies from polluted air and polluted water. And a lot of that pollution is done by huge corporations. So it's interesting to see that um, the sort of prevailing thought through both social media and mainstream media is that somehow the common people are at fault, that we're bad people, that we pollute, and that we don't know how to take care of ourselves. But the truth of the matter is, those people pointing the finger are actually, in my opinion, psychopaths. And they're the ones who own the big businesses that create the pollution and create the problems that we're facing. So I'll give you an example. Those who are at the top of the food chain, they um, are the ones who are supplying us with fake foods, foods that are not healthy, that are not good for us, and they're abundant, and they're cheap, and a lot of people are addicted to them. And that's fueling the fire uh, for illness, which feeds the um, organizations and the whole medical industrial complex, which is owned by the same people who own the makers and the owners of the crappy food. And they're tied in with the pharmaceutical industry. And so that provides all kinds of people who are not only sick, and then they are erroneously going to the medical services and the um, pharmaceutical industry for help. And that's actually keeping them sick because it's a disease management system. It, doctors are not trained. It's not that they're evil. They're not at all. They're good people. They're doing the best kind of job they can do with what, they, what they're trained to do, but they don't find the root causes of illness and they don't um, address those root causes. You know, how long has it been since you went to the doctor and he or she asked you, how much sunshine and fresh air do you get every day? How well are you sleeping and how many hours are you sleeping a night? What are you eating? Are you getting any exercise? Those things are never mentioned here in Canada by the doctors that we go to for help. And that's a huge, huge problem. So again, um, a lot of the chemicals that have come out that are very toxic and poisoning people, these are done by um, the big companies, the big, big businesses that are owned again by the same people who own the banks and own the military industrial complex. And then there's the whole idea of war. To, for us to be sending our young men and women to fight in wars in the year 2024 is insanity. There's no reason why the world leaders can't sit down and get reasonable 
conclusions and ideas and practices and procedures where we can solve our issues peacefully here on earth. Now, another problem is many of the uh, world leaders are relying on so-called experts. And these experts are products of an education system, which has also been tainted long time ago so that they don't have correct understanding on how things work and how we could actually cure our problems in a healthy and humane way. So that's all tied in in a big mess that's pointing their finger at us, telling us, because they own the media as well, the mainstream media and much of the alternative media, telling us that we're bad, that we're polluting, that we're doing bad things. Now, getting back to ET, ET has come to tell us that we need to wake up and smell the coffee. We need to wake up. And of course, we need to take care of our own habits. You know, are we litter bugs? Are we um, purposely doing things that add toxicity to our bodies? Are we polluting the environment? Are we starting forest fires? If we're doing any of those things, then we got to stop. We got to stop right now and start taking care of our environment. So, for instance, if we go on a picnic, we pack up everything that we brought with us, whatever we packed to go into the picnic situation. We want to make sure we clean up and we pick up everything and maybe a little extra and take it home and dispose of it in a proper way. You know, if we're out and we're camping, we need to be very careful that we're not flinging our cigarette butts out the car window or leaving our campfires not completely extinguished, which could add to forest fires. We need to do our part. So it also might mean walking more and driving less. It might mean buying products that have less packaging. And it certainly might mean making better choices in the products we buy for our personal care products, the foods we eat, and take better care of ourselves and our environment. This is very, very important. And then another thing I want to just touch uh, on to very briefly, and that is, how are we taking care of our pets? Many of us have pets that we love very, very much. But what are we feeding them? Are we feeding them cheap bargain cat food and dog food? Or are we making the effort to feed them um, a sustainable and proper diet? Are we giving them raw meat? That's what they would eat in nature. And when we feed them raw meats, they live longer, they're healthier, and then we don't have all the vet bills. So that's another thing. And how are we treating our pets? Are we treating them with love and compassion? Or are they just some kind of slave that we use for personal gratification? It's very, very important that we look after their psychology because when we become pet owners, we're literally putting the animals into a slave situation in our home and we have to think about how we're treating them. So that's something else I want to bring out because I noticed that so far in my experiences, ETs don't keep pets. They don't keep domesticated animals. They keep animals out in their natural environment. And I thought that was something interesting. So I just want to take a moment now for a very short promotion. And um, it's only less than two minutes long. And then we'll come back to the subject again. Right now is the perfect time to heal your mind, body, and spirit. But for some, it may be more difficult, as there are those that have experienced unexplained phenomena, such as alien abduction and implantation. Many that have experienced this don't have anyone or anything they can turn to for help. Mainstream medical practices will not acknowledge the presence or treatment of these implants. They can be synthetic, holographic, energetic, or etheric. They can block your energy pathways in order to alter your feelings, behaviors, preferences, and limit your potential. K2 
Karen Holton has created the Quantum Health Transformation Program and the Alien Implant Remedy. The Alien Implant Remedy is a proprietary blend of essential oils, crystal frequencies, argon energy, and guided meditation designed to work together to move energy and dissolve the implants. Due to current conditions, supply is limited, so check them out today. These kits provide the right combination of energetic frequencies specifically designed to disable and dissolve energetic implants that may be holding you back. Karen Holton also offers energy and wellness coaching, ascension workshops, Zendome's argon generators, and spiritual support. Visit KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com or click the link in the description to find out more and get your alien implant remedy today. Thank you. So, yes, I'm actually going to be doing a show um, coming up in the next few weeks about alien implants. And I just have a couple of things I want to say about them. Yes, they are a real thing. Now, some people want to keep their implants because it actually uh, serves to keep them in a tighter connection with their interdimensional and ET friends. And that's perfectly okay. But there are many other kinds of implants. There are implants that are etheric. There are implants that are genetic. And the way I found out about implants was through my extraterrestrial contacts who were telling me that implants are holding people back. So they actually gave me the information I needed to create the alien um, implant remedy kits. And I have another a remedy kit that's also available, but in very short supply, they're almost all sold out, called Evil Be Gone. And it's also a combination of essential oils and uh, orgone generators that, um, and of course, a daily meditation that you do along with it that helps to keep, oh, what we would call maybe spirit attachments or um, any kind of energy that's causing a problem in your life to get rid of that and detach it and make sure it doesn't come back. So the orgone generators are made with specific crystals that emit a frequency. And then the essential oils also were, um, the idea of which essential oils was given to me by my ET friends. And then I hired a specialist um, who um, knows basically everything you could know about essential oils and had her um, come up with some formulations. It's interesting that after I had the formulations, I tested them with a pendulum to find out uh, which ones were the best, and it confirmed everything. So I put together these kits. So they are available in limited supply if you're interested, and you can find them on my website. So um, enough about that. We're going to be doing, like I said, a show all about alien implants in the near future, different kind of implants, how they affect us. The ones that are not really good for us emit, either emit a frequency or they alter our own resonant frequency. And in doing so, that sort of disrupts the delicate balance within the body that keeps us um, running at our optimal efficiency and health. So yes, we will get into that in the future. So I have a couple of announcements. I guess I will go off into that right now. Um, there is no show next Sunday. I'm having company from out of town, my daughter and her aunt and my grandchildren. And we're having a birthday party for the grandchildren. So there'll be no show next Sunday, but the Sunday after we will resume. And of course, the Quantum Guide Show with Karen Holton is um, also going to be available next Wednesday and the Wednesday after and the Wednesday after that. So there'll be no disruption in, um, in that show. So I hope you will join us. This week coming up, we're having Elsa Dillon. 
and Becca Dickens on the Quantum Guide Show. And we're going to be talking about remote intuition. So um, Elsa Dillon, you're probably familiar with her. She's had a lot of transdimensional, interdimensional, and um, extraterrestrial experiences, as has her whole family. She has eight children, herself and her husband, Richard, and they've all had these experiences. And Elsa is able to help people with remote intuition. And uh, Becca Dickens, she's a regenerative farmer, but she also helps people with um, remote intuition readings, as do I. And if you're interested in learning more about my services, they're available on my website under the shop tab under Vital Services. So um, that's what's coming up in the following week. Again, for those of you who joined us later, uh, late, later, whatever, partway through the show and you missed the announcement that I made at the beginning, tomorrow is Don Rogers and Canadian Spinja. It's their wedding. And I am officiating that wedding. And Robert Khalil of the Typical Skeptic podcast will be streaming it live and he will be our master of ceremonies. So very excited about that. I wish a huge congratulations to Don Rogers and Canadian Spinja, two amazing people so well suited to each other. Makes me so happy that um, you're getting married tomorrow and it's going to be a pretty exciting day. I'm looking forward to it and I hope you all join us to share in their joy and their love. And let me see what else is there. I guess that's about it. So we're going to end the show early today. I want to thank you all for joining us. And I hope you'll share this uh, show with your friends and your family. And uh, that would be great. If you could just stop by and click the like button, I would really appreciate it. It helps the show to spread out and get more views uh, according to the algorithm. And besides that, I wish you all just a lovely week. Let me just check one more time, see if there's any more comments. Oh, there is one more comment. We'll just check it out. ML, hello, Karen and all. I enjoy your podcast. They are very interesting. Thank you, ML. I really, really appreciate that. That's really sweet of you to say that. And um, yeah, so um, we're going to end the show a little bit early today. And I just want to wish everybody a fantastic week. Enjoy your summers. And I guess that's about it for today. And I'll say bye-bye. And I'll see you next week on Angel, sorry, Aliens and Angels. Thank you for joining me for the Aliens and Angels podcast. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube, Rumble, and X channels at Karen Holton TV. Click the like button, leave me a comment, and share this podcast with your friends. Check out my website at www.KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com to see my free resources and amazing products and services. All of the links will be in the description below. As part of the Forbidden Knowledge Network, you will also find the Quantum Guide Show with Karen Holton on all audio platforms. Until next time, keep up the good work.